as much as it looks like it's a lot of work and as big as it sounds, you can break every step into making a cute wedding dress into tiny bits. Guys, even right now, I didn't feel like shooting this content. It's Sunday morning. I just wanted to stay on my bed and just chill. Hi, Pendralites. How are you doing? My name is Glory Pendra Akban, GPA. If you're new here in this channel, I talk all about fashion business. I give you tips, ideas, and strategies that would help you become that successful fashion designer, fashion brand, or fashion business that you dreamt of. If this is the kind of content you like to watch, all you have to do is hit the subscribe button or hit the follow button and welcome to the Pendra Light community. It's absolutely free. You'll like it here. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you tips that has helped me stay focused when I want to work for long hours. Tips that guides me to achieve something even when I don't feel like it. Because guys, even right now, I didn't feel like shooting this content. It's Sunday morning. I just wanted to stay on my bed and just chill. But I have things that lead me to carry myself off the bed, come downstairs, set up my camera, set up my light, check that everything is okay, and shoot content for you. It requires high discipline, guys. But also in this video, I'm going to be telling you how to stay disciplined. I would like to give a special shout out to an outstanding Pendralite, and she's none other than Queen Were the First from Kenya. <laughs> Hi, Queen. I see you. Thank you so much for staying true to all the community guidelines and loving my content. I would love to give you a shout out. I would love to get to know you. All you have to do is go down to the comment section and tell me your name and where you're watching me from. And in my next video, I'll give you a shout out. It's so good to have you here. Number one, you have to decide what you want to accomplish during your period of focus. For example, I want to have about two to three contents on ground so that I'll be able to spread them out throughout this week and not run out of content guys i feel really embarrassed when i am inconsistent here on youtube or on facebook and for this reason i decided to batch create my content now like i said i didn't feel like it but because there is a set goal of posting at least one or two videos every week and i don't want to be found inconsistent in fact it will make me really sad to be inconsistent that is if you want to compare how I feel now and how I will feel when at the end of the week I have not uploaded any con any post or content on YouTube or Facebook is worse, right? So that's enough motivation for me to carry myself down here. And also, before I start shooting, I already have my content topics down. I already know what I'm going to be talking about. The previous day or any time in my spare time the previous weeks, I might have scripted the content even before I come to shoot. Sometimes I pick my topics based on you know, the feedbacks I got from my subscribers and my followers from the previous week. But trust me, the script had already been write, written. I know what I'm going to say before I come here. Now, in fashion designing and tailoring, it's about the same thing. You're set to sew a dress. You must have planned ahead of time. You must make sure you have your lining, your threads, your embellishments, and everything you need to sew that dress. Yes, I'm saying this from experience. There are, there are some moments where I just get up and I say, oh, let's make this, right? And when you put yourself in that work mood and then you realize that as simple as the right color of thread or the matching color of zip can deter you from going into full focus, from going into full work mood, and that's not good. So you have to know what you want to achieve and prepare, right? Prepare. Put everything in place to make sure you achieve your goal during your deep focus or deep work period. Number two, you have to break your tax down into smaller manageable chunks. Like I said, I know what I'm going to do before I roll out of my bed down here. Now, how do I break down my chore, the chore of shooting this content right now into smaller bits? Number one, I go carry my tripod stand and I place it down. That's one small manageable chunk. 
Number two, I pick up my extension, plug it to the wall, and set my light on. That's a small manageable chore. Number three, I clean the lens of my camera phone and place it on my tripod stand. I put my seats right here and do all the necessary checks to make sure that I look okay on the camera. When you break down your chores or your goals into smaller manageable bits, they don't look so difficult or so... Oh, I won't speak big English. Herculeneous. Herculeous. <laughs> In fashion designing and tailoring, let's say you want to make a luxury wedding dress, right? The first thing you would do is to draft the pattern. Or if you have already bought an already made pattern, you want to make sure you check the pattern to be sure that you got the right fit. That's one small step you can take in making a luxury couture wedding dress. As much as it looks like it's a lot of work and as big as it sounds, you can break every step into making a cute wedding dress into tiny bits. After that, the next thing is to source for the fabric, right? These steps can be done one day at a time. These small, small steps can be done one day at a time. And at the end of the week, you would have your cute wedding dress all ready. Fabric bought, fabric cut, then you begin to stitch. After that, you begin your embellishment. After that, you check for fit. You know all the steps, right? So no matter how big a tax or a project or a garment is to produce, always remember that you can break them down into tiny, tiny tax, small, small manageable tax that doesn't make you feel so tired that would not allow you procrastinate because one of the reasons why we procrastinate is that we see the work to look like so much when something seems so important and seems so big we always tend to push it away i'll do it tomorrow i'll do it tomorrow and you never get to do it but if you break it down into small small bits that you can get done with in the next 10 minutes or 20 minutes you know and then you can stop for the day and continue the next step the next day then at the end of the week or the month you would have achieved the lot my birthday month and guys for this month a whooping 31 days i'm going to be offering you guys a highly highly hugely discounted fee for my fashion business mentorship clap for me now as i cannot cut cake for you guys I can offer you my mentorship, my time, my services for almost nothing. All you have to do is make a commitment of 3,000 Naira so that I am sure that you want this. Because if I was going to make it completely free, every Tom, Dick and Harry and unserious fellow will be flooding into my WhatsApp and I don't want that. So I want you to make a commitment of just 3,000 Naira and I will mentor you for one full month. Look at my screen right now you will see when this offer will be over that's all number three you can use the pomodoro technique in this technique you can set your work time and for example i can sit down here and decide i'm going to shoot this video for only 25 minutes anywhere where i stop when my 25 minutes alarm sound i will stop and take a break a break of about five to ten minutes and after that, I will come back and continue shooting. I can continue like this. And after four circles, I can then take a much longer break. I did this last Sunday and I was able to shoot four videos. Never been done before in a day. I've never been able to shoot four sit and talk videos like this in a day. But through the Pomodoro technique, I was able to do this. This technique is also good for those people that don't know how to sit their butt one place and do something for so long. Shout out to my brother Trip. He is one of those. He can't sit still and get anything done for more than that 25 minutes. About 20 to 25 minutes. He must get up, you know. And I know so many successful CEOs who cannot also sit down for very long hours to get anything done. They must distract themselves. This technique would greatly guide you, right? So you can sit, do your work. After 25 minutes, you take a 5 minutes or a 10 minutes break, go play a video game or go out for a walk or enter Instagram. Well, don't enter Instagram. Instagram will suck you in for longer than 10, <laughs> 5 to 10 minutes. You get my drift. And then you can go back to work. 
that way you don't feel too pressured right you you have time intervals where you are allowed to let out let off the steam and then return back to work as a ready to wear brand i use social media platforms mostly to carry out my research for what is trending i use the pomodoro technique to keep me on check because while you're on those platforms something fun something interesting and distracting is likely going to pop up and after five to ten minutes you bring yourself back you know to what you were there for which is your fashion research so in whatever tax or projects you're up to you can use the pomodoro technique this technique has been found to be highly highly effective in increasing people's productivity number four eliminate every distraction the closest distraction right now to you is your phone turn off all notification sounds log out of all your socials probably switch off the phone and toast it aside where you would not see it so that you can allow yourself focus on the tax for the day or for the hour an example before shooting this content my friend had chatted me up that she and a mutual friend were going to come see me in the past i'll be so excited they are coming and give them audience but now i have found that to get things done i have to make sure that my work is my priority before leisure and fun so i told them they can't come of course i rescheduled to another time which is my leisure and fun time. As much as you love your husband so much, your boyfriend, your friends so much, there are times that they might bring sweet hot gist when you're trying to focus on your work. That is a distraction. You must be able to let everybody know before time, usually people in your home or in your space, that when you're in your work zone, you would appreciate it if they do not bring any form of distraction or discussion Hold on till you're done with work. Or when they forget body and still come to you while you're working, just politely let them know that you do not want to entertain any form of distraction right now. You want to focus on your work and later you would give them your attention. Make sure your workspace is not a distraction in itself. I know so many people who like to work with a cleared desk, nothing on the desk because Sometimes when your body is kind of tired, your brain is kind of tired, but you're still trying to get yourself to focus on your work, anything can be a distraction. Even the calendar on your table, even a colorful pen on your table. So I know a number of people who like to make sure their environment is clean and tidy and devoid of anything that would seem distracting during their work time. Number five, practice mindfulness. This one, I'm still a student of mindfulness mindfulness is a simple way of meditating or using breathing exercises to keep your focus sharp so what i simply do is i breathe in deeply hold my breath and breathe out breathe in deeply again hold my breath and then i breathe out i keep my focus on my breath doing this about three times and it just helps clear my head and keep me focus back to the chore or the tasks I had at hand. You might want to search the internet to fully understand mindfulness and the practices of mindfulness, but I assure you the little one I know and I'm implementing is helping me. Prioritize your tasks. Start with the most difficult tasks. Discipline yourself to love to do the most difficult things first. This one is something that I quarreled most of my tailors about last week. I found that when they have cut the bodies and the bodies is a bit technical and cut the bottom part, you know, they are always wanting to begin their work with joining or working on the, the bottom part first before attending to the bodies because they think the bodies is a bit too technical. And because of this, I find that they waste a lot of time, their morning energy, working on something very simple, something that if you are sleeping, you can do, you know. Instead of starting with the one that seems a bit more difficult, so that you can give your whole, you know, morning energy and time to do that. Because the other one, even when you're weak and tired, even when your brain is, is, is sleeping, <laughs> it's so simple that you can still get it done. So practice it, guys. I've been doing this for a while now. Always start with what seems difficult. Then do the easiest stuff later. Because 
when you're set to work, like I said, procrastination will kick in. Procrastination is simply trying to avoid doing the difficult things, you know. So you find yourself doing other small, 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 small irrelevant things, you know, or small, small things that are not irrelevant, but in your head, you know that the main thing you're supposed to be doing is this particular difficult one you're avoiding. But when you, when once you start practicing doing the difficult stuff first, you find that gradually your procrastination reduces. You're no longer a procrastinator. You are now a productive, you're now a productivity expert. You have to limit multitasking. I know back then, you know, growing up, in fact, even still now, there are a lot of people who know how to juggle three, four, five, ten things at a go. And we celebrate them and make it look like it's awesome if everybody can learn to multitask as well. But guys, I have come to find that you cannot really achieve a lot when you are multitasking. Try to stay focused on one or two things for a day. One or two primary goals for a day. In fact, one. So that at the end of the day, you can say, I achieved that one thing. So many times I find that when I try to multitask, at the end of the day, I almost achieve nothing. So make sure when you wake up, you have one primary task, one primary goal, one primary thing that must be done that day. At least one. Then every other thing can follow. Stay organized. I'm going to keep using myself as an example, especially in my content creation journey. I found out gradually I wasn't loving makeup as much as I used to anymore. But, you know, it keeps me sharp when I'm here on camera and I would love to wear makeup when I'm shooting my content like this. But because my makeup was so disorganized, because my things were just scattered everywhere, you know, you turn around and... And it just would almost make me not shoot my content for that day just because my makeup is disorganized, you know. So I found that when I just got a tiny purse, because I have a lot of makeups, right? I just got a tiny purse and put all the little things, you know, that I need for the little basic makeup thingy I need in that small purse and keep it zipped. And then anytime I want to do my makeup, I just go carry that small purse open it and almost everything i need will be in there instead of carrying the whole big bag or box of makeup and be searching and scattering you know looking for things i found that i spent really limited time you know trying to get my makeup ready or get my makeup on ready to come and shoot content you know do you know that little thing that little thing got me chunking out a lot more content than before when my makeup was really disorganized I know this might sound very trivial, but trust me, it is in the little things. It is in how you organize the little things that will get you to achieving those big things or those big goals you are looking to achieve. Go and look at your shop. Is it very organized? Do you have a place for your zips? Do you have a place for your tread? Do you have a place for your lining, chiffons, or ganza, all those your leftover fabrics? You know, it's a constant struggle, I know, because even I am there. As much as I stay, try to stay organized, when you have all those small, small, small leftovers, you know, that you feel this thing is useful, or I'm not going to trade it away, I can't trade it away, where do you keep it? How organized is your workstation for your workflow? Is your ironing table in Sokoto and your sewing machine is in Kafangchang, but your weaving machine is far, 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 far away? You have to make sure you organize your workstation such that the work just flows, right? It, it, it will help your productivity. Sometimes those big things you are looking to achieve will happen faster when you organize the small, small things in your life. Use tools like to-do lists, calendars, and other productivity apps to keep tabs of your tasks and deadlines. I should also add that you must take care of yourself. As simple as having a good sleep, having enough sleep, it goes a long way to affecting how productive you would be at the end of the day. There are sometimes I work really late in the night or I had just too much coffee and I couldn't sleep well at night, I couldn't sleep at night. And, you know, you wake up in the morning feeling very, very shitty, like feeling angry. I'm looking for the right word, cranky, you know. It doesn't allow you to achieve much in that day. So make sure you have enough sleep, sleep well, sleep well.
have enough sleep, exercise, eat healthy, drink water, mind your business, avoid anything that will give you unnecessary pressure, like those who look very successful on social media. That thing can mess your mental health. And ask you questioning yourself, am I working hard enough? What's my own in this life? You know, am I an onlooker or a potato, you know? So you have to protect your mental health as well. Only follow people that will inspire you. Follow people that will teach you. Avoid anything that will drain you. You need all the energy. Life is too short and there's so much you want to achieve. So make sure your body is fine and your mind is healthy. Practice focus regularly. Just like your muscle when you go to the gym. If you continue to go to the gym, your muscle is going to be toned. Your muscle is going to be built. Same thing with focus. When you continue to practice focus, you will find over time that you're going to be a lot more focused for longer periods of time than at the beginning of your practice. Start small and work your way up. Try to focus for 25 minutes, then gradually go up to 30 minutes, up to one hour, and then up to two hours. Small, 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 you will get there. And celebrate yourself. Celebrate yourself when you're able to achieve anything at all as a result of your practice of focus. Be patient and don't be too hard on yourself. If you've watched this video up until this point, thank you so much. There's another video on the screen right now that I believe will help you become a better fashion designer, a better fashion entrepreneur, and a better pen dry light. Thanks for watching and bye.